Welcome to our executive interview series from CyberTalks, presented by CyberScoop. I'm Wyatt Cash with Scoop News Group, and we're here today with Christian Hoff, Director, U.S. Federal Civilian and Health Team at Amazon Web Services. Christian, thank you so much, as always, for joining us. And I'd like to start by asking, how has the increasing shift to and reliance on cloud services made a real-time cybersecurity and threat detection easier or harder for government agencies? Uh, thanks for having me, Wyatt. Always great to, uh, to be with you. Um, cybersecurity is never easy, but cloud services can make activities like threat detection uh, easier by allowing customers to access events and close those gaps between detection, containment, and recovery. And the cloud provides customers with an increasingly broad range of options to address business, operational, as well as security needs, while removing a lot of that uh, uh, undifferentiated heavy lifting that is normally associated with building or installing uh, you know, software stacks and, uh, and hardware. So applications running in the cloud uh, environment gain a number of security advantages over on-prem workloads. And among them is observability. Uh, that is the ability to understand and identify the resources that are running, what data is actually stored, as well as where and how it is secured, who's accessing the data, and how those resources change over time. At AWS, security is our top priority, and we offer more than 300 security, compliance, and governance services that uh, and features to help customers secure their cloud environments. So for example, uh, AWS customers can use tools like AWS Config and resource tagging to see exactly what cloud assets that their organization is using at any any moment. So no more hidden servers uh, under the desk or anonymously placed servers uh, in a rack and plugged into uh, a uh, government or corporate uh, you know, network as in the past. So uh, then services like AWS uh, CloudTrail uh, enable customers to maintain a comprehensive audit trail in the cloud, uh, ranging from logins to uh, resource creation uh, and changes to data access. Uh, you know, threat detection, why it goes beyond observability, though. And at AWS, services like Guard Duty and AWS Security Hub and Amazon Detective really help aggregate, prioritize, and investigate and act on, on those findings. And so doing that in real-time analysis of data feeds supported by machine learning help detect patterns faster and classify those findings based on context. And so these services help our customers, security teams quickly differentiate between normal activity and some of those potential threats. Well, as you know, the White House's national cybersecurity strategy and, and its push for zero trust security have established a number of critical security milestones, both for the nation and government agencies to meet. I'm curious, how have those initiatives made a difference from your perspective and how government organizations are actually investing in cybersecurity? Yeah, great question. And, and you know, we really commend the White House for prioritizing zero trust architectures in the federal government. Uh, at AWS, we believe that network boundaries aren't sufficient and we implemented zero trust components before the team was even the term was even widely adopted, uh, such as the way customers interact with our services uh, over the internet via APIs. Further, we have implemented uh, zero trust architectures in our own environment, uh, allowing our workforce to access corporate resources uh, over the internet. AWS has a long history of delivering capabilities now under that umbrella of zero trust. You know, that is capabilities that don't treat the network perimeter as a single point of defense, that do not presume privilege, and that continuously monitor and verify access uh, requests. So for example, 
many AWS resources operate in the context of a user-defined network. And with those resources protected by uh, stateful firewalls that we call security groups. And so these provide customers with a powerful mechanism to control the flow of traffic between resources, such as virtual machines and databases. You know, AWS also promotes the use of short-term access permissions versus long-term static credentials. And so these short-term credentials are more secure than those long-lived tokens and are applicable to both human as well as system principles. And the use of these types of credentials really have been built into the very fabric of networking and security architecture on AWS. And so more recently, we introduced AWS Verified Access, uh, which enables customers to provide VPN-less secure access to their corporate applications. And so customers can use Verified Access to reduce those risks associated with remote connectivity. And so now IT administrators and developers can define fine-grained access per application using real-time contextual signals, including identity and device posture. So verified access also simplifies security operations. And so customers can manage policies for each applications all in one place now. And so to easily verify users against specific security requirements, verified access integrates with identity and device security uh, partners uh, that our customers uh, really have grown to trust. And so security is everyone's responsibility. And as we say at Amazon, security is job zero. Well, Christian Hoff, uh, as always, thank you for sharing your insights and also some of the specific ways that agencies can really fortify their cybersecurity posture uh, and better protect the nation's data assets. So thank you for being with us. Thanks for having me, Wyatt.